Welcome to a video on learning Twine. This video is an extended and advanced example of a fantasy roguelike. We can choose our character. Devin is a fighter. He fights. That's pretty much it. Thilda is a wizard. They have studied the arcana for many years and has even mastered some of it. Smoke is a rogue. She knows how to pick a lock, steal anything found inside, and close the lock before anyone notices. Yes, she has your missing wallet. Let's go smoke. We can adjust our statistics here. Health and intelligence. So we have remaining points 5, and current health is 10, and intelligence is 10. Let's bump up our health a little bit. And intelligence just a little bit. So we have health 14, intelligence 11. We can reset points if we want, and I can reset this. And that's good. Health is 13, intelligence is 12. Let's enter the cave. So we're smoke, a rogue. Our health is 13, intelligence is 12. You look at the scroll you stole from a merchant earlier today and back up again. This has to be the cave mentioned. The bounty explains that treasure awaits. And if there was ever a woman who needed treasure, it would be you. Our current area. You see a large open area. Well, that's very good. Of our remaining rests, we have three. We can rest if we want, but let's not use them yet. We can proceed. Well, we lost one health. You fight some bugs and take one damage. That's not very good. See a large open area. Our health is going down though, now we're at 8. Let's go ahead and rest. So now it's back up to 10. See a tunnel extending ahead? Oh, we avoided a trap. Our intelligence is greater than 10. Proceed again. Proceed again. We avoided a trap. Health is down to 4. Let's rest one more time. Oh, we lost 3. Let's rest one more time. And large open area. Hey, we passed through the cave successfully in the end. So let's look at the code here. The first of which is a character screen. As we saw, we can choose between Devon, Thilda, and Smoke. We see the descriptions we saw as part of a link macro here, as well as some initial statistics, character, class, health, intelligence, and total points. Devon is set as a fighter to a health of 15, intelligence of 5 to start. Wizard is set to health of 5, intelligence of 15 to start. And Smoke as a rogue is set to health 10, intelligence 10 to start. In each case, we're going to statistics. So let's go look at statistics. Statistics has a number of different things happening here. It's repeated uses of the link repeat macro in Harlow. So we see plus and minus for health and plus and minus for intelligence. In each case, it's checking to see if the total number of points is greater than zero, in which case we can increase one of them. It's adjust adjusting health and total points accordingly, and then replacing whatever is in the named hook for health stat with content that contains the named hook again. This is a trick in Harlow to create that real-time effect we saw. If we substitute a named hook with itself, we can continually update things. So we see this use here, health stat for health stat, when we updated those. And as we saw in practice, health and intelligence were updated and remaining points was also updated each time. And we could reset all of those, health to 10, intelligence to 10, total points back to five, and reset all of those again, using the named hook and replacing a named hook with itself. Finally, Set macro is used here to show a header set to true and health max set to health. This line especially prevents us from increasing our health past our initial values. So whatever it is set here initially in statistics is the maximum health and we can't go past that. Finally, if the class was fighter, we're going to the fighter cave. Class is wizard, we're going to wizard cave. Class is rogue, we're going to rogue cave. Let's look at each of those in turn. Fighter cave. Well, we see some text and display next event. Let's look at Wizard Cave, some text and display next event. And in Rogue Cave, some text and display next event. So let's go look at next event. Well, next event is using that same trick again. This time though, displaying next event, the variable, and using link repeat here and down here for proceed and rest. So we're increasing event count by one. We're checking to see if event count is greater than events length, in which case 
we've gone through all of the events and we can go to the good ending. Otherwise, we're showing the next in line through this counter we're updating and we're doing that same trick again with replace, replacing a named hook with itself. Same thing with rests, we're checking our remaining rests, we're decreasing it by one, checking to see if it's not less than zero, if it is, set it back to zero, doing that same replace trick again, and if our remaining rests are greater than zero, we can rest, if not, we've run out of them. Well, all of these variables here, especially events, weren't in the character screen and weren't in statistics, so where were they defined? They were defined in the startup passage. The startup passage is using the startup tag in Harlow, which means it will be run first before any other passage is run. So we see here show header set to false. Events here we see being established as an empty array using the array macro. Next event sent to an empty string. Event count sent to one. And this is important right here because uh, arrays in Harlow start with one, not with zero, so we're starting with one. Setting our max health initially to zero, but as we saw in statistics, it was, gets reset whenever we initially set up health, and set our remaining rest to three, just to initialize here. Then we're displaying the passage generate events. Let's go look at generate events. Generate events, as we might guess, generates all the possible events we'll see, in a range one to ten using the four macro. So from each of the spread out operator in the range 1 to 10, 10 loops here. We're setting next location to either open area, tunnel, or encounter. Then we're adding it to an array of events. So set events to it plus a new array containing next location, the string. And so by the end of this, we will have 10 events that each of them are either open area, tunnel, or encounter, which we saw in practice as we move through them. Then we're setting next event to events and an index event counter. Initially, as we saw in startup, it's set to one. So next event is equal to the first event in the array of events. So as we saw, startup sets initial values uses display macro for generate events. Generate events is either open area, tunnel, or encounter. It sets them all up, sets the initial one. Then as we saw in next event, we slowly move through them one by one by one. As we saw in each case, it was using the display macro to display next event, the variable. The variable next event was one of three possible passages, open area, tunnel, and encounter. Let's look at each of those in turn. Open area, as we saw, you see a large open area. Nothing really going on there. Tunnel, you see a tunnel extending ahead. And then we see some different uses of the if and else macros here. So if intelligence is greater than 10, we avoid a trap. Else, we set loss, temporary variable loss to a random number between one and three. So then we lose health due to rough climbing. We decrease health. We use the same replace trick again to update health, then we call, then we using the display macro, check health. Let's go look at check health. Check health, as the name implies, sees if health is less than or equal to zero. If it is, it means we run out of health. So we turn show header to false, set show header to false, go to the bad ending. So each time, any time health is being updated, if it's if it's any health is being lost, we go ahead and check health. Coming down to encounter, we see similar to tunnel. If intelligence is less than five, we fight our way. Else, if intelligence is greater than 15, we avoid an ambush. And the same thing again, set loss to a random number between one and three, we lose some health. We update health, set health to it minus the loss. We replace it using named tag of its same name. We say what happened, we fight some rats or bugs take the loss damage, and then again, check health each time. Finally, the show header turning on and off is something we haven't covered yet, so let's go look at that. It's defined in header, which is using the header tag in Harlow, which means it will be run before passage content. So in order, our startup passage is being run, then our starting passage, in this case, character screen, and then 
the header would have been shown between those. However, where it show header is seen here, if it's true, if it is, we show this, if it isn't, and so we saw in startup, show header is set to false initially, so we don't show that content initially until we get to statistics, where I mentioned show header is turned back on, which was the content we saw, character, class, health, and intelligence. Notice the named tag for this hook is set here, and is updated in various other passages like tunnel and encounter when we lose health. This is because the header passages with the header tag will be shown, then the passage content. So since it already exists, we can update that name tag and tunnel and encounter. Finally, our two endings, bad ending and good ending, are just that. We died in the dungeon, that's definitely a bad ending. Or a good ending, we passed through the cave successfully. And those are shown, as we saw, either we go through all of the events, initially defined and generate events, or we run out of health, as we saw with Check Health, and we go to the bad ending. This has been a review of a complicated and advanced example of using various different functionality within Harlow. Using replace macro to replace and named tags with itself, changing statistics back and forth, using display macro multiple times to display different passages within itself, and combining the various tags, startup tag and header tag, and the order in which they display to do different functionality within Hartlow. This code example can be found within the description of this YouTube video, as well as a proof copy of that same code. Thanks for watching.